Hey everybody. Well, it's been another week and I have gotten so much stuff done. It's crazy. <clears throat> uh, because of the whole uh, monocoat debacle with the chipmunk, I kind of put that aside and started working on some other projects. And one of them was I got the P40 that I recently acquired um, off the rack and did some work to it. Uh, now it's all set up. It's programmed. Um, once I did that, I decided to bring the covering back to life. This, uh, this was in kind of rough shape. It had been flown a lot, which is good. And then it had been sitting for a while and just needed some love. Um, but upon doing some repair work, don't mind that. We'll get to that later. You're probably excited now. Um, decided to do some uh, shrinking to the, the monocoat. And the downside to this flat monocoat is it gets pretty brittle very easily, especially over open bay surfaces. Now most of this plane is all sheeted, but the, the control surfaces are all open bay. So needless to say, the elevator shattered when I tried to uh, work on the covering. So I ended up just recovering both elevators. As you can see, the uh, the brown or tan, whatever you want to call it, is just slightly off, only because this has faded. So this will fade to look like this in a short period of time. But the olive drab is olive drab is an absolute perfect match, and I forgot how awesome it is to cover with flat covering like this. This stuff works so well. Oh my God, it's a joy to work with. But with not a whole lot of work, I got this bad boy looking like a brand new airplane again. Uh, the cowl, I need to uh, make a new exhaust here. This one broke, so I'll just kind of carve one out of a piece of wood and wedge it in there, paint it up. Um, I did re-glass the inside of the bottom of the cowl. This had been nosed over a couple times, so it was it was a little banged up. So I re-glassed the inside. <coughs> oh, excuse me. So now that's good and solid again. Um, but besides that, oh, we'll get there. We'll get there. Um, I've had this old Hangar 9 Extra 260 sitting here for a while. Um, this, which per this was purchased at Toledo a few years ago. It was kind of a mercy purchase, if you will. Nobody was buying it. Um, it was getting knocked off the tables up in the swap meet. And... Uh, a buddy of mine, Jay Husk, bought it for not a whole lot, just because he kind of felt bad. Um, and it sat around in his workshop for a while, and then uh, either he gave it to my buddy Cole, or some somehow Cole ended up Cole ended up with it, and uh, now I ended up with it. Of course, my intentions for it was uh, my son's getting interested in doing some a uh, little bit more not necessarily 3D aerobatics, but he wants to get into hovering and you know actually fly a good powerful aerobatic airplane. So I figured this will be a nice one for him. So it's pretty much ready to go, just needs a couple more things on the inside. Um, dealing with old Ultra Coat sucks. And that's why I don't like Ultra Coat. I, it, it was awful to try to restore this covering and not only that, putting new covering on for patches holy mackerel that just that was awful um, the main thing on the front I don't know I'm pretty sure this plane was crashed at one point or another because the whole front lip of the cowl was just crushed so I did uh, so I re the inside of the lip all the way around so now it's oops it's uh yeah not attached um, now it's really sturdy I did just a little bit of body work and then masked it off and painted the front. You can see that uh, the white paint matches the white covering, but the stock white paint on the cowl has kind of creamed out a little bit. That's a terrible word. I'm never going to use that again. I apologize. Uh, it has faded a little bit, but oh well. This, this plane is not going to be a looker. This is a beater, so if my boy ends up crashing it, you know, whatever. 
So I have been doing a lot of stuff. This is all programmed, ready to go. Just need some stuff for the inside. Oh man. Um, I had this on the bench yesterday and I just got the fuselage wrapped up, ready to get down the wing. And, oh, we're getting there. In the mail came two of these. Oh man. Old label Monaco that I found on eBay. Look at that color. Look at that blue. Now for those of you that are still naysayers saying that I have lost my mind, I know the camera can pick up that difference in color. I am so glad I didn't just decide to cave and go with this. Yeah. It's flat! <laughs> it's not flat. Ay, 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 people. So this is 90s Monocoat right here. This is awesome. So as soon as I got this in the mail, which would have been around 3 or 4 o'clock yesterday, the P40 went back into the other room, and I got to do some monocoating with 90s Monocoat. Oh my god, that was awesome. Oh, we'll, uh, we'll get to that too. So needless to say, I thought, well, you know, I'll just cover the blue on the wings. Well, I got done with that rather quickly and decided it's time to do some stripes. So last night, pretty late, I got the left wing panel completely done, all striped. And then this morning, I striped the right one. And wouldn't you know it, wouldn't you know it, it's pr Oh, I'm sorry, I did not mean to kick you. I really didn't. Forgive me. It's probably kind of hard to see, but I'm sure you can see it in the glare and that red stripe. <laughs> After I got done covering the wing, I was moving it around my workbench, and I dropped it. Normally not a big deal, but I just so happened to have a couple screwdrivers and a few screws laying there, and it landed right on top of it. Son of a bitch. Oh. Peeling that stripe off is not going to be an easy task. I don't even think it's going to willingly come off, so I'm going to think about if I'm just going to call that hanger rash and leave it be. I don't know. I mean, because really, unless you're looking at it in just the right glare, you can't see it. Yeah, yeah this, this is all dirty and smudgy. I haven't polished it yet. Um, oh my god. That was so disheartening. But, oh well. It's just a model airplane, everybody. But anyways, got all the stripes done. I just noticed that. Look at that. How freaking cool is that? How freaking cool is that, huh? Oh, it doesn't get any better. It doesn't get any better. Um, probably the most time-consuming portion of the stripes, besides actually applying them, was getting the spacing right. Because I see a lot of chipmunks that are not done properly as far as the stripes. It really doesn't matter. For me, I always make sure, because I've, I've covered quite a few in the Art Shoal color scheme, you got to have nine red stripes on each side. There has to be nine. The full scale had nine. This has got to have nine. But even on my Goldberg, I didn't do it absolutely right. Because the one at the wingtip is the same thickness at the widest part of the wingtip as the rest of the stripes. Where on the full scale and how I did this one, the one at the end is a lot more narrow because it's kind of compensating for where it wraps around the wingtip a little bit. But, don't believe me? Look it up. The one at the wingtip is a lot more narrow. So trying to get that figured out, uh, to get the spacing just right, took a little bit of time. And it turned out that each stripe is 2 and 5 eighths wide. So basically starting at the end and going in 2 and 5 eighths and just boom, 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 and repeating. Um... It went pretty, it went, it went fast-ish for what it is. Um, if you're curious how I did it, how I applied them, go back to uh, my Monocoat video that I did last year 
um, when I was covering my SIG Cub about applying monocoat over monocoat. That's exactly how I did this. So that is awesome. It uh, It's looking like a chipmunk's supposed to. Um, here, hold on a minute. Let me reposition. Okay, in a little better position here. Because um, you look at the full scale, the Goldberg doesn't have, the Goldberg or even the Ohio RC doesn't have the wing fairings. So you kind of start the first stripe just slightly out from the fuselage a little bit, which is the same way it is here because you have the wing fairing here. So it starts where this blends into the wing. So this first stripe is flush with the end of the wing. And then you just go from there. As you can see, boy am I glad I waited to get good monocoat. Got a couple wrinkles on there. Um, because I sealed this wood, it is so easy for air to get trapped under there. So, and I have a real dry basement in the winter time. So, I just let it, I let it wrinkle up for a while. I put it down with a lot of heat, a lot of pressure, but I'm going to let it wrinkle up. And then for these couple little spots where there's some bubbles, I have a small little hypodermic needle just to poke a couple holes, hit it with the iron, and uh, they'll work them, they'll work themselves out. No big deal. But boy, what a smooth finish. I mean, for, for an amateur like me that doesn't know what I'm doing, this is a pretty damn smooth finish. I mean, it's terrible, but, you know, it's smooth. <laughs> I know some were interested on the engine setup and like I said just uh, using cheap plywood from the hardware store I know I'm going to get a lot of shit for using this but I've been using it for years it's never let me down especially if you know how to use the stuff and you soak it right with CA to really stiffen it up because um, one of the biggest I wouldn't say issues but if you just try to drill and tap this the threads are not going to be very strong because of the type of plywood it is, but I seal the threads when I'm done, so they're they're in there. So kind of overdone, pretty stout. As you can see, what I was talking about, where it took some time to get these spaced just right for the two outsides of the, the sides of the cowl, where the top and bottom are pretty much flush, so that's no big deal. But I'm going to go in there with some tri-stock, put them around each one. Um... Yeah, that that's 65. That's a that's a nice nice engine. Um, trying to think what's next. I can probably start uh, wrapping up the. I want to get the wings probably done. I have all the everything is now covered except for the hatch. My new canopy is finally on its way thanks to Mark at Carolina Custom Kits. He's got the new canopy coming out for me. So as soon as I get that, I can get the hatch wrapped up. Um, and get that finished, then there will literally be no more covering left on the airplane. I mean, right now it is pretty much covered. It's it's built, and it's covered. Um, just little odds and ends left to do. Uh, building the gear, building the gear fairings, getting the wheel pants set up is going to take a little bit of time. I can't finish the cowl until I figure out what I'm going to do for an exhaust. Because other than that, I'm taking advantage of this nice little this little tunnel in here. Plenty of room to put my ignition in there. Um, and I already showed you in the last video, I had the cutout for the ignition wire, which, you know, not exactly the prettiest thing. But this tunnel is really nice because it goes into the fuselage, and because of the way I have the wings mounted with those little holes in the bottom, that air that comes in through the cowl, through the cylinder, now has a pass through the fuselage and exit out the bottom. So good enter 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 and exit air that didn't sound good so before we continue today's video showcase oh come on give me something worth looking at here here we go so this is jeff cherry he's been doing youtube videos for quite some time it's just a group of guys in ohio that uh get together on Sunday afternoons and fly. It looks like one of them's got a, a GPS on board, some, some electric airplane they're cruising around. But they just have a good time. Um, check out their channel. Everybody loves Tim. He's a hoot. Oh, 
boys. So check him out, the, Jeff Cherry. The, so this right here, we have an aileron. A very nice aileron. But yet, there's ailerons here. What happened? Well, if you remember a while back, when I was talking about how the first aileron that I built, I wasn't extremely happy with because I didn't do it the same way I did the other one. Each aileron was custom built to each wing panel. So that, that was pretty intensive. And the way I did this one, I did it right, but when I did my measurements, I did the measurements wrong and it was too thick. Um, so right after I got done with last week's video, I was looking at this wing and you know when I was looking down at like this right now it's a smooth transfer to the aileron with this aileron it would it was kind of a, a step up and I I just couldn't live with it so I decided to build another aileron which took about three and a half hours and that was built and covered so <laughs> it didn't take long I mean I got it down to a science now it's just a pain in the butt so now I got a random mailer on just to hang around. Maybe I'll bid it. Maybe I'll you know have people bid on it so they can have a piece of my amazing chipmunk. Yeah right. Um, so that's where we're at. Lots of work been done, especially on, on three different airplanes, mind you. That's uh, I've been pretty busy. So, um, let's see what else did I want to go over. I haven't decided yet what servos I'm going to go with. I mean, I'm going to go with Pro Modeler servos. I'm really happy with those servos. That's what I got in my Cub. I use these as kind of a test bed for them. Um, I get these from John Beach, and I'm sure a lot of you remember John from Model Sport Magazine. And I just so happened to have an old one I was watching right there. Um... But these servos are so close to being considered American-made that it's it, it's so close. The only thing in these servos that is not 100% American-made is the motor. They're, it's Chinese, but, you know, take what you can get. The price is good. They're really powerful. They're reliable. They're smooth. So I'm going to go with those for this guy here. I just got to figure out which ones I want to get. Oh, that looks nice, doesn't it? Boy, that looks nice. As you can see, uh, you know, it takes a little bit of time to make sure you get everything straight. You want you want this uh, blue line right here to be straight all the way across to the other wing. Um, you know, it, it for it's a simple color scheme, but it's also very complex. And yeah, the underside is done as well, which is just uh, which is just red white and blue got the pockets cut out for the servos and I got the control horns too um, so as soon as I get servos I can get the wings wrapped up probably the next step I'm gonna do is uh, is hinge everything I mean obviously everything is hinged but I'll get the hinges all glued in so that will probably be the next step as you can see covering over covering the only bubbles that are in there, just little teeny tiny air bubbles that will all go away. Kind of like when you put vinyl on a, on a surface, you get little bubbles in there, but as soon as it gets introduced to the sun and the heat, they go away. Awesome, awesome. Well, I'm going to go ahead and get this video uploaded, and I think I'm going to take a break for a while. I'm going to disassemble this, put it away, uh, probably get the wing out for the P40, get that all finished up, because this thing is ready to go. I mean, it's it's ready. And uh, maybe if I get some motivation throughout the week, which I'm sure I, I, I should, and get this thing hinged, there probably won't be a video next week because there's just not a whole lot left that I can do on it right now that's worth making a video. Um, is this gonna be a minute before I get servos? You know, I don't get paid till next Friday and yeah I'm a paycheck to paycheck guy 
so gotta wait for a while but we'll see if I get a lot of other a lot of other things done then uh, maybe I'll bring you back next week for another video but until then later <laughs>